Has your banker seemed overly eager to sign you up for a new credit card or maybe even switch you over to a different kind of account? Thousands of bank employees have been fired for doing just that, but for all the wrong reasons. Sherry O joins us this morning with details on all of this. They were doing what they were supposed to do, what they were told they were supposed to do. Crazy. It's crazy. And now they're out of work. Right. So Somebody walked away with millions. You may have heard the story. So what happened <laughs> is Wells Fargo has fired over 5,000 employees, been fined $185 million, basically for setting up uh, credit card accounts and bank accounts uh, and running credit reports without customer consent, without customer knowledge. Roxanne, the exact kind of thing that we expect from hackers and scam right. artists, but not from our bankers who have our information right there at their fingertips. And and the exact kind of thing that we could go to jail for doing. If you did the same thing on a mortgage application, you could go to jail for that. That's so, right. And if you think Wells Fargo, oh, Wells Fargo's not my bank, I don't need to worry. This has been found to be happening at several banks. Well, so why were bank employees doing it? Well, here's the thing. We've talked about this before. When the banking crisis hit and all these new banking regulations and the interest rates have been so low, bank profit margins are down. And we've talked about the fact that they were going to look for other ways to make money. One of those ways is what's called cross-selling, which is actually a good thing. So, for example, you could buy several different types of insurance from your insurance company and get a good deal, package deal on that. But in this case, Wells Fargo was using, encouraging their employees to cross-sell with incentives like, you know, you have to open 40 accounts a month, we'll pay you bonuses that kind of thing and they're not monitoring to make sure that the accounts were properly open so they were fake accounts the point is we have now learned that we can't count on the bank management to protect us and we really can't count on our own regulators because this went on for years that's what I think is so scary that it's, it's gone on for so long so how do you protect yourself well if your bank first of all you want to research your own bank and see if they've been involved in anything like this if they have uh, you can keep an eye on your mail. We consider these, you know, you've been pre-approved type mm -hmm. things, junk mail, but be careful about that. Keep an eye on your credit report for any new accounts that maybe you didn't open yourself. And if someone at the bank or any organization for that matter tries to sell you something, you're a little suspicious about it, feel free to ask them. What kind of bonus incentive do you get for selling me this? What's your sales quota per month? That kind of thing. So you can really flesh that out. I, I mean, do you really have to do like a bank physical every year, like check up on your bank? That's what it sounds we like. We have to be more vigilant. That's the bottom line. It's not just banks. It's any service provider. We have to be more vigilant. And it's not just hackers. It's sometimes these service providers you trust. It's incentives and human human nature. Thanks for updating us and filling sure. us in on the details, Sherry. Thanks a lot for.